Hello everyone, Dusty here with another video today. I'm going to be showing you a full tutorial on how to set up and use your new Elgato Stream Deck. So um, I got it specifically for my live streams on YouTube uh, and Twitch and things like that. And it's obviously probably why you got it. You can also use it for podcasting to uh, you know provoke sounders and sound effects during the show. Uh, but right now I'm going to show you how to set it up, get you started, so you kind of know what you need to do in order to set set up your stream deck, get it running and start actually utilizing it the way that you should to, you know, I guess justify the amount of money that you just paid for it. So the first thing I want to show you is the stream deck user interface right here. Uh, you already know what the stream deck looks like. It's a very small kind of rectangle uh, with 15 buttons, uh, all of them uh, LCD buttons on them that will basically display different images that will allow you to push different keys or hot keys or macros, whatever you want to call them to trigger an action. So as you can see here, here is my live stream. I guess you would call it a profile. That's what Elgato calls it. You can see here, I have one that triggers the screen and uh, camera. I have one that goes just full cam. I have one that triggers a countdown. I'll actually show you now exactly what that looks like and I'll let you see kind of OBS and kind of what it does when I push the various buttons. All right, so now you can see the stream deck in the upper left-hand side, and now you can see me in OBS in the lower right-hand side. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change over to full cam right now. Just like that, switches over to full cam with that nice little swipe animation. If I want to go back to screen plus the webcam, push the other button, and boom, it takes me right back to this scene. So basically, I'm switching from one OBS scene to another OBS scene. Now, another thing that I like to do is trigger my countdown. When it's time for my stream to start, boom, I trigger the countdown, and we are ready to roll. Just as simple as clicking that there, and then whenever the stream is over, I'll just hit the thank you button there, and it says thank you for watching, and it also triggers some really cool music that I downloaded from YouTube Audio Library. Now, the other cool thing that I have going on here is I'm able to trigger websites or go specifically to URLs. So for me, what I can do is if I want to pull up, say, Amazon.com, I can push the button there in the lower left-hand corner, and that will automatically pull up Amazon, as you can see here, very, very simply. Now, I can also pull up my own website. So if I want to go ahead and pull up my YouTube channel, I just push that button there, and then boom, the YouTube channel is automatically loaded up just like that. Now. I'm going to show you how to set this up, how to get these, these things to trigger the way that you want, and then get a little bit more in depth of what you can do with the Stream Deck. So let's go ahead, reorganize everything, and I'm going to show you exactly how to set this up. All right, I have minimized OBS now, and we are going to dive in head first, and I'm going to show you from start to finish how to set your Stream Deck up. So the first thing you want to do is click the down arrow here where it'll probably say Default Profile, and then right there where it says Default Profile, go to Edit Profiles. This is where we are going to create a new profile. Now, more than likely, you're probably using OBS. Now, you can use this for other applications like you can see here. Choose the applications here, but for the simplicity of this video, we are going to select OBS like this right here. And so choose OBS, and then once you've done that, go ahead and close out of your profiles. All right, and then once you've created your first profile, it's going to look like this here. You're going to probably have uh, 15 empty buttons here. Now, anything that we drag over to a specific button will show up immediately on the actual Stream Deck. So if I drag over an action, I'm going to see it immediately on the Stream Deck. So if I want to drag a source from OBS over to one of these empty buttons here, I click it and hold, and then you'll see it turn blue there, and you'll see a little arrow. So click and release, just like that, and then it's gonna ask you, okay, since we're in OBS, you need to give this source a title, the collection, and also scene and source. Now. For some reason, the Elgato has a problem like pulling up the collection and scenes. So you may have to click off that button and then go back to it in order for it to work. But that's kind of the workaround that I've found so far. Hopefully, they will update that in the future. But give this one a title. We can call it Scene 3 if we want to. The collection, if you've you know titled your collection in OBS, that will be here. The scene will be whatever you want. You know, If you've got multiple scenes within OBS, which you can see here, I have a bunch of them. And then the source will be a specific source. So for me, let's go from this scene here, which is screen capture and webcam, and then the source that I want to trigger, once I click the drop down menu here, will actually be my webcam. So the way that I do that is go ahead and click webcam there, and then 
basically that scene is set up. So now I can open up OBS like this here. I can go ahead and click that new scene just like that and it will trigger basically the webcam just like you see here. So again, very, very handy and very helpful. Again, that's basically all you have to do to set up specific actions within the Stream Deck. Now, if you want to edit this at any time, you can click on that little button there, click on the, the little guy we just created, and you can delete it by clicking the trash can. You can refresh it by clicking this little icon here. You can even go here and change the scenes, change the source, all of that stuff can be changed and edited right here from within that button. Now. Obviously, mine are not very, very visually appealing. If you want to change the icons of um, the buttons that you create here on your Stream Deck, it's very simple. Basically, you select the one that you want to change. Let's say I want to change the icon, the visual aspect of the icon of this one here, the Patreon link here. Basically, what I'll do is underneath the system right here where it kind of gives you the icon here, right click on that and then go to set from file or create new icon. We're going to go to create new icon. Now, obviously, you can download icons from the internet. If that's what you want to do, upload those. I'll show you how to do that shortly. But if we go here to create new icon, we are able to use the Elgato Gaming Stream Deck software to uh, create some really cool different things. Now, again, it's not very robust, but once you're here, you can select the different images here. You can actually add text layers by you know utilizing the text key here. Very similar to a lot of visual, I guess you would say, editors like Photoshop, things like that, but obviously much more dumbed down. So we're going to go ahead and clear all there, and let's go ahead and add just a smiley face just for the visual purposes of this here. And then let's go ahead, and once we are done, we'll go ahead and go to Save Key. Now, I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bigger so you guys can see it. It'll actually show you a preview of what it will look like. Click Save Key. You can see there that it actually saved it there in my downloads folder so if we click that arrow go to show in folder it's actually going to be under the download section I'm gonna drag that over to my desktop just to make it easier here for the tutorial and then what I'll do is I'll right click that one again there on the stream deck I'll go set from file and then I'll go to the desktop I'll select the one we just created and click open and now immediately on my stream deck it's going to show the smiley face plus the text that we added there previously pretty pretty cool. All right, so now we're going to get a little more in depth. You know how to kind of work with scenes and sources within OBS. Uh, all of these over here are going to be the different actions that you can trigger. Obviously, I'm not going to talk about each and every one of them or else this video would be three and a half hours long. That's not what I'm going to be doing today. I'm just going to be focusing on kind of showing you how to set it up and then you could kind of take it from there and customize your deck to kind of work and look the way you want it to. Now, I'm going to go ahead and click this one that I just created and hit the trash can to delete it. It'll say, are you sure you want to delete this? I'll go ahead and click the delete, delete button and boom, that button, that basically trigger action is now gone. So let's go ahead and also guys, make sure if you're using OBS Studio uh, that you, you know, pull it from this one here. And if you're using Streamlabs OBS, you pull it from this one here. That confused me at the very beginning. So let's talk about websites and let's, let's talk about different ways to trigger uh, basically how to pull up a website. So let's do that now. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and under system here and click and hold the website icon here and drag that over to where you see the blank image, just like we did earlier and let go. Now you're going to see system website. Give this a title. So let's say we want this to bring up YouTube. So let's go ahead and type in YouTube as our title. And we want our URL. The URL has to include the HTTP. So normally what I do is I open up Chrome. I actually navigate over to the website that I want to uh, go to. And I'll copy the actual URL. And then once I get here, I'll go ahead and paste it just like that there. And that's kind of how that works. Now, this little link here that says access in background. Let me kind of give you a little more in depth of what this means. Now, uh, stay with me here because this, this is kind of gets in the weeds and I want to kind of explain to you guys how this works. So if we check this where it says access in background, the only way you ever want to check this is if it's going to trigger like a chat alert or something you want to insert in YouTube live streaming chat or Twitch chat and you don't want it to actually pull up the URL. So for instance, Right here, I have my Patreon link and my Patreon here. This button here, basically, I'm utilizing a service called Livestream Alerts. Now, you can go to their URL, you can figure out, watch a tutorial on how to use Livestream Alerts if this is something you want to do. The reason why I have access in background is because it will do the web request without opening a new browser window. So I want it to trigger the action, which is to actually go in and 
use and say some text in chat, but I don't want it to pull up a new browser URL because it would basically ruin my live stream. I, I don't want it to show the actual URL doing all of the work that it's doing. So you can go to livestreamalerts.com. I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So if you go to livestreamalerts.com, so I'm going to go there now. You can actually, again, it's a very dated website, but you can go here and trigger different things. So it's a web platform that allows you to, uh, during your live stream, acknowledge supporters, allows you to send different messages basically by clicking a button. So if we go here, and then let's go to an event of mine that's coming up. So if we go here, and then let's go ahead and navigate to our creator studio, and let's go to my live streaming section, and I'm going to show you guys exactly how that looks. All right, so we are now at the actual watch page of the upcoming live stream that I'm doing tomorrow. Now, if I click that Patreon button there on my Elgato stream deck, just like this here, you, sh you will see in a few seconds, you will see something trigger here in chat. There you go. Join our private creator Discord channel by supporting us on Patreon for as little as $1. So basically, this allows you to go in and say different things in chat like, hey, support me on Patreon or don't forget to subscribe without having to go in and type and do this and that. It eliminates all of those keystrokes, eliminates all of that time, and it also saves you a lot of time and trouble because a lot of things that you normally would do, like say if I want to share my Patreon link, I've got another one for that. I just click the button there on my stream deck, and as you see here, in a few seconds, boom, there's the Patreon link. And again, those are all done using the website feature here. So as you can see here, I titled it Patreon, and then I've gone here, I've used live stream alerts, and I don't want to show it in the background. Now for Amazon and my YouTube channel and my personal website, I have this unchecked because what I want that to do is when I click on that button, I want it to automatically open the browser and go to my website. Very simple. Again, I know that's kind of a lot to consume and take in, but that's kind of where you're at now. All right. And then the last few things that I want to say is if you are a Twitch streamer, which a lot of you probably are, it's a little easier. So like for Twitch, you can do this here, drag this over like a chat message, drag that over. And then basically, if you are logged into your Twitch account, which you have to add, by the way, and I'll show you how to do that shortly. Uh, let's go ahead and do that now. You can basically add your Twitch YouTube accounts and do all of that by basically going to account, add account just like this here, you can see I have my Streamlabs account, I have my YouTube account, and if you want to add another account, click the addition symbol there, go to Twitch, and then basically it'll log you in via the website. So we'll go ahead now and uh, log myself in just like this here. And give me one second, guys. It should log me in here shortly. It'll say authorized just like that. And now your Twitch account is opened up and synced or linked with your Stream Deck. All right, so... Now, let's go ahead and edit this one here. We're going to go ahead and see here. That's my account. I'm going to go ahead and title this Hello World. And then as you can see here, we can actually enter a Twitch message. Uh, thank you all for stopping by. So it'll work very similar to what I just showed you with uh, stream alerts there on YouTube, but it's very more intuitive with Twitch. So you can do a Twitch me message by doing that there. We're going to go ahead and remove it just because I don't want to get it all cluttered here on the screen. The next thing that I want to show you is basically you can show the amount of viewers or a live count of your stream. So basically, let's go ahead and call this uh, viewer count, just like that there. You want the account to be a technology guru, if that's what you want it to do there. And then basically, once you trigger this action, it'll show you uh, wherever you place this on the screen, how many viewers are actually in your stream. All right. Next thing that I want to show you once I remove this is that you can actually trigger sub chat, slow chat, followers chat, emote. You can do all of this with a click of a button. So if you want it to go into sub chat, basically drag this over here. It's going to be sub chat. Give it a name like sub chat if that's what you want it to do. And then boom, you click that button. It'll immediately change your Twitch channel from uh, the plebs to the subs, just like that with a click of a button, my friends. And all of that, again, has worked very similar within the Twitch section there. If you're using XSplit, you can do that there. If you're using YouTube, you can do this here. Now, again, I've tried to use the YouTube chat message here, but unfortunately, there's some things because of Google Plus that it really doesn't work. So I highly recommend if you want to do those instant chats that I just showed you guys, you go through the Stream Alerts website, the one that I showed you here, livestreamalerts.com. I'll put that link in the description for you guys to kind of see and kind of see which one you want to go with. Now, uh, the other thing I want to show you guys is under 
Streamlabs, which you can basically hook up your Streamlabs account, is you can trigger all of the different actions and alerts you can do within Streamlabs. So if you want to spin a wheel for a giveaway, you can go ahead and drag that over there, and it will allow you to basically push this button, and it'll spin a wheel and announce who the winner is, literally with the click or press of a button. Now, remember, you have to have your account linked up. So for me, I have my Streamlabs account linked up. Now, in order to do that, if we go over here to edit profiles, it's gonna take us to the profiles preferences. You can also go to accounts, and this is where you can navigate to add your YouTube Streamlabs, as well as Twitch account to do all of that stuff, to get all of that linked up. Now, I'm gonna remove that and show you one last thing. Remember, when you are using these profiles that you can actually have multiple profiles. So let's say you run out of room. Let's say you run out of room on this one and you've got all of this filled up. So let's just go ahead and say that we've got a scene here. We've got a scene here. Next thing you know, it's like, oh my goodness, I'm running out of room. I just spent a whole bunch of money on this thing. What do I do? So basically what you want to do is basically right click on one of your buttons like this and go to move to folder. Now this folder here, once we click on that, is going to take us to a whole nother level of buttons. So let's say you have all of your OBS scenes in one folder. So basically once you've done that, created your folder, then you can just take the different ones you want to add to that folder, click and hold, hover over that folder, and then boom, you are good to go. Same way if you want to remove them from that folder, click and hold, go over the arrow just like that there, and then there you go. You're right back where you started on that first page. This allows you to, within one profile, actually have up to, I mean, hundreds of different keystrokes if that's what you want. Now, again, for simplicity's sake, you may not want to overcomplicate things and get too crazy with it. What I recommend is for your first stream that you're utilizing the Stream Deck, I would highly recommend you only do maybe one or two pages of these, get used to kind of the controls, get used to kind of navigating it and then once you've done that then go more in depth and really have some fun with it hopefully you guys got some value out of this tutorial if you did i would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel like this video share this video so more people will get help with their stream decks thank you guys talk to you in the next one